even if you're not doing so good, there's a time that you just go ahead and clap anyways and praise God. And there's a, there, there's a command in the Bible that says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And he commands us to always rejoice like it's a command. And that means if, if it's a command, that means I need to do it as an act of faith sometimes. That means not, not always do I feel happy, but I got to go ahead and start thanking God for what he's done and begin to rejoice and, and by faith thank God for what he's done, what he's doing, and just get a change of perspective, and then it'll be a change of emotions next. Let's give the Lord one more praise. He's a good God. He's worthy. So glad to see every one of you here. Tonight, we're, we're going to be talking about staying free. We're not, it's one thing to be free, but now we're going to talk about how do you stay free. And this is actually one of the teachings I'm supposed to be doing for Holy Warriors 2. So I'm going to do it tonight. Tonight is a really important lesson class. It's like you're in class today. I'm going to go through how to stay free. Not to be free and go back into be, get set free from the rejection, get set free from the addiction, get set free from the anger, get set free from the fear, get set free from the anxiety, get set free from the doubt, and then go back and get in bondage to the depression, get in bondage to the same cycles. There's a way to live, not only be free, but stay free. You don't have to go back into slavery. Jesus said, who the son sets free is free for real. That means you can stay free. But I'm going to show you how to do it. Because staying free is warfare. And I'm going to show you how to resist the chains that try to come back. And we're going to dive into this. And, and for some people... You're going to learn some theology today, word, some word, study of God, study of Scripture, so you know how things work. There, there's people in this room that you think once you got saved, the demons left and they can never come back. But the Bible doesn't teach that. Even Jesus, when he was tempted, tempted, Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness Jesus resisted the devil. The devil came, the devil came to conquer Jesus through lies, deceptions, and shortcuts and temptations. Jesus resisted every single temptation by the word of God. He spoke the word of God. And the Bible says that the devil left, and in one version it says he left for another opportune time. What that means is that he would leave and that he would come back even to Jesus to see if there was an open door next time. And if, if, the, if demons go back to Jesus, those old things, those old chains, those old habits that you've been familiar with, and some of us are, have, are dealing with familiar spirits. These are things that have been passed on to you from one generation to the next generation. You were, come on, it was assigned to you, and you overcame it, and it left. But understand, just because it left doesn't mean it's not going to come back to try to retrap you. And you're going to have to learn that when it comes back, you're, in, you're, you're ready to resist it again. So you, you don't go back into bondage and end up in a worse place. This is real warfare. And we're talking about real freedom. Freedom, freedom for what? For, freedom for what? Freedom to be who God called you to be. Freedom to be happy. Freedom to have peace. Freedom to do ministry. Freedom to make disciples. Freedom to do God's will. Free to do God's will. We're going to talk about that tonight. And this is a night to study, take notes. You could teach this to anybody for the rest of your life. We are going into session, really session six tonight. How to stay free. How many want to learn how to stay free? Lord Jesus, speak to us tonight. Holy Spirit, 
get this teaching deep in our soul tonight. We'll learn it. We'll grow from it. Your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, cause the growth. Holy Spirit, bring the revelation. Holy Spirit, bring the conviction. Holy Spirit, bring the transformation. Holy Spirit, bring new life to those that aren't saved yet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's your work. We welcome you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How to stay free. I'm going to start with three spiritual truths. Sp three spiritual truth, truths about staying free. Truth number one. We are responsible for making sure we stay free. Just because Jesus set us free doesn't mean that we're going to stay free. It is possible to go back into slavery again. It's possible for you to come in this place in chains, we're depressed, suicidal, and call on Jesus and be set free. It's possible to come into this place with a spirit of in sickness and infirmity in your life and get healed and be set free. But it's also possible for the thing that you were healed of or set free from to come back. And if you're not ready, you could get refilled or get back into bondage with something that Christ already set you free from. Look at the scripture in Galatians 5.1. So Christ has truly set us free. Christ Jesus is the only one that can truly heal you, set you free, make you into a new person. Now make sure that you stay free. So the scripture is saying Jesus sets you free, but he's saying it's your responsibility. Make sure you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery. And it said to the law, or we could, it could be to religion. Don't get, go back into slavery to unforgiveness, to bitterness, to rejection, to addiction, to sexual morality, to anger, fear, rebellion, etc. I set you free. Make sure that you stay free. Truth number one, we are responsible for making sure we stay free. Truth number two, it is possible to be set free from demons and be refilled with demons. And you might be thinking, is that possible? Yes, it is. Let's look at scripture. I don't teach anything without scripture backing it up. Someone might say, well, I don't believe it. If you don't believe it, you don't believe scripture. Jesus taught this in Matthew 12, 43. It says, when an evil spirit comes out of a person, now understand, the only way an evil spirit could come out of a person if Jesus cast out the spirit. Who the son sets free is free indeed. The ministry of casting out demons didn't even happen until Jesus came on the scene. Jesus was the first ministry of casting out demons. When the evil spirit comes out of a person, it travels through dry places looking for a place to rest. But it finds none. So the demon leaves and it starts looking for rest and it can't find any rest. So it says, I will go back home. Think about this. A demon that left is saying that your body, your mind is its home. Now Jesus is not figuratively speaking. He's talking about, he's giving us a picture of the spiritual realm. That there's actual demons that want to live inside of you. And they see you as their home. When it comes back, it is say when it, when it comes, not if it comes back, when it comes back. Because every demon that leaves you will come back. It finds that the home is still empty. Now, that's going to be the key tonight. He finds that the house is still what? The most dangerous place you could be as a believer is your house is empty. It is neat and clean. Well, who made it neat and clean? God made it neat and clean. The Holy Spirit made it neat and clean. Jesus made it neat and clean. Jesus put it back in order. 
Then the evil spirit goes out and bring seven other spirits more evil than itself. They all go and live there. Where? Where the demon left. The demon comes back, but he finds the house empty. How does he find it? What's the condition of the house? It's, that means it's not full. It should be full, but it's not full. It's empty. We see this even in homes in the city. An empty house is prime for people to go in and live in there and squat and destroy the house. There's people right now looking for empty houses to go in there illegally, squat in there, and if you don't watch it, they'll burn down the house. They will go in and live there. So the, so the demon says, I lost the house last time. I was removed. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to get seven spirits like me. I'm going to get seven more evil spirits than I am. So now the person will be eight times worse. The stronghold will be eight times stronger. So that way we'll never lose the house again. And that person has even more trouble than before. It's possible to be set free and then refilled with demons and be in a worse place than you were originally. In the same way, it is the same way with, ev with, this evil, with the evil people who live today. So truth number two is it is possible to be set free from demons and get refilled with demons. Truth number three, only way, the only way to stay free is to stay full. The only way to stay free is to stay full. The demon was able to come back because the house was empty with no resistance. It's dangerous to be a believer that's empty. Because empty spaces will be filled with God or with demons. So how do we stay free? Number one, we stay free by remaining full of the Holy Spirit, number one. We stay free by remaining full. Now this house was full of the Holy Spirit, full, there would be no room for a demon. There was room because there was space. The house, instead of being full, it was empty. Now, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So if you're full of the spirit, you're always free. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says the Lord is spirit. And where the Lord's spirit is, there is freedom. So how do, I get, how do I stay free? Stay full of the Spirit. And if I'm full of the Spirit, the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's not bondage, there's not craziness, there's not depression, come on, there's not fear, there's not rejection, there's freedom. We never stop seeking the fill of the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing, just like eating is not a one-time thing. In Acts 13, 52, it says, and the disciples, the disciples were continually filled. They weren't filled once. They were continually filled throughout their hearts and souls with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So they were constantly seeking to be filled. It's just like putting gas in your car. You got to fill it or else you run out of gas. You as a Christian, you could be filled with the Spirit today and be drained tomorrow. Drained because of the circumstance. Drained because of ministry. You're pouring out. Jesus even said this while he was on the earth. Virtue has left me. 
There was a lady that came in and touched him, and he felt, he felt virtue leave him. That means there was a draw on him. Challenges will draw on you. People will draw on you. A trial will draw on you. And that's why God set it up that you would consistently go back to him to get filled and refilled and refilled and refilled. It was a continuous thing, being filled with joy and being filled with the Holy Spirit. They come together. When you're filled with the Spirit, you're not filled with depression and joy. Joy and the Holy Spirit. Do you know why demons easily come into a home? Because there's no joy, because there's no Holy Spirit, and the enemy goes in, we're weak emotionally, and we're, we're, prime, we're prime targets for, a, for an attack and an assault or a reentry program. The result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is a fruitful and free life. If we're filled with the Spirit, we have a fruitful and free life. In Galatians 5.22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us. I'm going to say it again. The fruit of the Spirit is the result of His Spirit within us. Is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. So a believer that's full of the presence of God has fruit, bears fruit, and is free. If you're not bearing fruit, it's only a result of you not being filled. You will manifest what you're full of. If you're full of anger, if you're full of depression, if you're full of pride, if you're full of worry, if you're full of fear, you'll manifest that because you're not full of the Spirit. But when you're full of the Spirit, the result of, of His presence within us is fruit. So how do we get filled with the Spirit? Prayer always results in being filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend some time, downtime, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half hour, spending some quiet time talking to God and getting refilled. Some of us are too busy to be full. You're too talented to be full. You depend on your talent. You don't depend on the Holy Spirit. So you got a ministry that's full of talent, but there's no kingdom power. And that's why you got preachers could preach, but they're still depressed. Preachers could preach, and they're still suicidal. Worship leaders that are creating songs, and then all of a sudden they're turning into atheists. And I'll tell you why. They're not full of the Spirit. They have no prayer time. Because if you're spending time with God, you're going to be full of the Spirit of God. <laughs> prayer is a must. It's not an option. You got to spend time talking to God, meditating, getting filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 4.31, it says, after this prayer, say with me, after this prayer, the meeting place shook. You want power? Start praying. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. After prayer comes an infilling, a shaking, an earthquake in the spiritual realm, and then a boldness to overflow with the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ. A person that's full of the Spirit is not timid, intimidated. They're not bound. They're free to do what God has called them to do. It's time to start praying again. So how do we stay free? Being full of the Holy Spirit. Number two, how do we stay free? We stay free by remaining full of the Word of God. Remember, an empty house is dangerous. The only reason the demon could come back, the only reason the bondage could come back, the only reason the cycles of destruction would come back, there was a reason the house was empty. 
And it's your responsibility to make sure it's full. So we fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. We also fill our hearts with the Word. The Word keeps us free from the slaver of sin. You'll See, you don't have a sin problem. You're just empty. If you get filled with the Word of God, like really, think about it. When was the last time you opened your Bible? And study the Word. Then you wonder why you're struggling with something when God doesn't work. No, he goes, you don't work. You don't listen. You want to be free, but you're not spending time getting filled with the word. In Psalms 119.11, this is what David says. Your word I have treasured, I value it, and stored it in my heart that I may not sin against you. He said, I found a correlation. When my heart is full of the word, I don't sin. I don't go back into slavery of sin again. I stay free. Some of us have a confession that you're a believer and you're still a practicing sinner because you don't understand you can be free. We identify more with our sin than we identify with our freedom. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. But you're going to have to fill yourself with the Word of God. So he found the house empty. It had no Word. We fill our hearts and minds with the Word. How do we do that? By meditating on it day and night. Whatever you're meditating on all the time gets into your heart. Do you know why you're so worried? And you're so anxious and you're so lustful. <laughs> and you're so doubtful because you're meditating on demonic thoughts. And while you're meditating on demonic thoughts, demonic thoughts fill your heart. A matter of fact, your lifestyle agrees with the devil and doesn't agree with God. The only time you're in agreement with God is when you're meditating and you're speaking and you're thinking about the Word of God day and night. Day and night? Yeah, you used to think about drugs when you were strung out day and night. When you were in an adulterous affair, you were thinking about day and night about her. Or him. So if you used to give that much attention to the devil, why wouldn't you give that much attention to God? And I guarantee you this, if you start meditating on God's word, you're going to be filled with God's word and it's going to change your experience. <laughs> Psalms 1, 2. But his delight, someone say his delight, and desire are in the law of the, of the Lord. This, the idea is this. There's a group of people that love God's word. And until you love God's word, this scripture won't apply to you. On this law, on the precepts, on the instructions, the teachings of God, he ab habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. Every break I'm studying. Every break I'm meditating. Every break I'm thinking. I'm thinking on the teachings. I'm thinking on the instructions. I'm meditating on them. I'm speaking. I'm, I'm talking about the word underneath my breath. What would you say? The Lord is good. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. With every temptation, God makes a way of escape. What are you talking about? I'm, right now, I'm meditating. I'm filling my heart. Come on, I'm filling my mind. I'm filling my soul with the word of God because I'm tired of being in bondage to sin. I'm not going back into slavery, and I'm not getting my mind and my mouth in agreement with the devil. I've been done serving the devil. It's time for me to serve God with my mind, with my body, with everything I got. God, Jesus, set me free. I'm protecting this thing. I'm not just going to allow any thoughts to come into my mind anymore. Depression, you got to go. You have no place here. Rejection, you got to go. You have no place here. Spirit of religion, you got to go. Offense, you got to go. Nothing that's not word will be allowed to stay in my mind. Yeah. 
day and night. Dia y noche. You don't go on break at night. Some of you guys can serve God in the day, but at night the freaks come out. And you're one of them. The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. You get freaky. Because at night, you adjust your life to the spirit that's there. And God is saying, even in the night, come on, you are meditating and you're shining light. Your mind is still on me. Give God some praise if that's you. Now, a mind full of the word results, a mind full of the word results in a fruitful prosperous and spiritually mature life, not bondage. In verse 3, Psalms 1, 3 says, and he, the one that meditates on the word day and night, and he shall be like a tree firmly planted. Firmly planted in the church. Firmly planted in the ministry. Firmly planted in the spirit. Firmly planted in the word. By the streams and water, ready to bring forth fruit. Someone say fruitful. He's not ready to go into bondage, ready to be depressed, ready to be captured again. In a season, and its leaf also will not fade. We're not fading away. You see me here now? I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here next year. I'll be here the year after that because I ain't fading. A matter of fact, I'm getting stronger. My roots are getting deeper in the Word of God, and I'm spiritually maturing because I'm learning how to keep my freedom. And everything, someone say everything. Everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. Unless you start seeing, you wonder how come other people get it and I don't get it. You're meditating on the wrong stuff. You don't even know where your Bible's at. Where's my Bible? I, I, well, you know where your phone's at. You know where your bong's at. You know where the beer's at. You know where the porn's at, but you don't know where the word's at. And then you wonder why you can't be free. Come on, if you're going to be free, you're going to have to make up your mind. I'm going to meditate on God's word day and night, and I'll prosper in everything I do, and I will get to a place of spiritual maturity. Come on, anybody want to mature here? We stay free, number three. We stay free by living a life full of love and forgiveness. So we stay free by living a life full of the word, full of the spirit. And we stay free by living a life full of love and forgiveness. Unless we learn how to unconditionally love others and forgive them, we will never stay free. I'm going to make a statement. Love forgives. And if you're not forgiven, you're not loving. Satan uses, uses people's offensive behavior to conquer our love and trap us again. In 1 Peter 4, it says this, above all things, above all things, have intense, unfailing love for one another. My love for you is intense. That means your offense is not more intense than my love. So I guarantee you this, you're not going to conquer my love. Because your, your offensive behavior is not as intense as my deep love that God's given me. You cannot, see, you can never be strong and stay free with superficial love. Superficial love means this. If, it's, if they treat me right, I treat them right. You ain't even there yet. You're conquerable. You're really offendable, super easy. Look at, above all things, intense on feeling love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Love forgives and disregards offenses of others. So when you're walking in love, you just disregard stuff. I disregard it. Well, you know they did it. I just, it don't matter. They did it. But I'm not going to let it conquer my love, conquer my freedom, conquer my joy, and take over my conversation. They messed up. I understand. I forgive them. I move on. But I'm not going to get trapped. 
and they're not going to conquer my love, and they're not going to conquer my ministry, and they're not going to conquer my sleep, and they're not going to give me nightmares, and I'm not going to be offended, and I'm, gonna be comp- I'm not going to start complaining. I'm not going to let it take over my praise. And they're not going to take over my meditation because if I start meditating on the one that offended me, the one that offended me gets in my heart. I'm already in bondage. Loving and forgiving others is a must when it comes to staying free. If you cannot forgive people that are offensive, that are hurtful, that are persecuting you, you'll never be free. Colossians 3.13 says this, make an allowance for each other's faults. Good news, news, everybody got faults. (laughs) Well, if they were perfect, I could forgive them. Stop it, you ain't perfect. Make an allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Forgiveness and love is a must if you want to be free. There's never a time to hold on to a grudge. There's never a time to hold on to bitterness. There's never a time to take revenge. Choosing not to forgive, check this out, is choosing to be in bondage to demons. Choosing not to forgive is choosing to be in bondage by demons. Ephesians 4.27, and do not give the devil, do not give the devil an opportunity. Do not give the devil an open door to get you off track, to get you back in change, to get you out of the church, to get you out of ministry, to stop you from loving, stop you from progressing, stop you from prospering, stop you from having favor. Do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin, lead you into sin. So the devil's trying to lead somebody into sin tonight by holding on to a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating, cultivating bitterness. Like I'm cultivating, like you're trying to get a harvest. You do get a harvest of demons. You're given a place for a demon to come in or demons to come in. Demons are looking for an opportunity to enter and anyone that's holding to on to unforgiveness and choosing not to forgive and holding on to a grudge has an open door. Say, welcome, demons. Come in and put me back in bondage and torment. Number four. Are you guys still with me? We stay free through a life full of godly fellowship. We stay free through a life full of godly friendships. We will not stay free. Check this out. We will not stay free if we cannot stay in church. Before we go back into bondage, we start neglecting church meetings. If you cannot stay in church already, you're not free. You used to stay in the clubs. You used to stay at the casinos. You used to stay in your addiction. Well, the church offended me. Do you mean when you were in a crack house, everybody was nice? Come right, come on in, come on in. Everyone was polite, yes, sir. You know, you're the bad, sir. Everybody wel- that a welcoming crew there, just welcoming you. And, and oh no, don't sit there, that's their spot. It is stop you. And all of a sudden, you, all of a sudden you get a little offense and you let it take your freedom and it gets you out of position. And I guarantee you this, once you stop going to church, you're going back to bondage. <laughs> Hebrews 10.25 says this. Look at this. Look at this. Not a, not a suggestion, a command. You should not stay away from, neglect, forsake the church meetings and meeting together. You should not... Stay away from the church. If you're staying away from the church, you're going into bondage. 
as some people are doing. Some were abandoning Christianity and returning to Judaism. You know what he's saying is? When they stopped going to church, they went back into slavery. They went back into religion. They went back into bondage. They went back into depression. They went back into addiction. They went back into violence. They went back into the hood. They went back into prison. They went back into a dysfunctional relationship. They went back into the adultery. And I'm telling you this, stay in church and you'll stay free. Early believers stayed strong and free by devoting themselves to a full schedule of godly fellowship. Someone say full schedule. You'll never be free if you're a part-time church member. I want freedom. It's just like you want to be in shape, but you don't want to show up to the gym. You're dreaming. You think church is an option. Church is for you so you can get filled with the Spirit, so you can stay strong. Don't be like people that stay away from church. Don't let nothing keep you away from church. Well, there's hypocrites there. I know there's hypocrites everywhere, but I still go to Walmart. I still go to my job. I, still, I was still going to a casino. I was still messing up my life. There are hypocrites everywhere. I'm not going to use that as an excuse. There's pretenders, but there's some real people that love God, that been set free, and they're staying free, and I'm there to worship with them. That's my family. Early believers stayed strong and free by devoting themselves to a full schedule of godly fellowship. In Acts 2.42 it says, they were continually and faithfully continually devoting themselves to the instructions of the apostles and to fellowship. They were continually Devoting themselves to instruction of the word, hearing the word, and fellowship with godly believers. Now, this is the problem. If you're not fellowship with godly believers, by default, you're going to be fellowshipping with ungodly people. Ungodly fellowship leads to ungodly living and bondage. In 1 Corinthians 15.3, it says, do not be fooled, deceived, misled. Bad friends or company will ruin good habits or character or morals. Bad friends, wrong company will get you back in your mess. And stop hanging around backslidden Christians. Wow, I used to go to the way. Well, why aren't you there anymore? Well, you know, I, I, just, I, I just think everybody, I think Pastor Mark, I think, I, I, shut up. You're just making excuses. Right now, your bondage is speaking. That's not your freedom. Come on, God, people are getting saved. People are being discipled. People are getting set free. I know that's a trick of the devil, and I'm not in agreement with you. Get behind me, Satan. And number six, we stay free through a life full of service and disciple making. When we're not free, I want you to guess, when we're not free, we cannot serve in ministry and make disciples. If we are free to serve and make disciples, keep doing it. And this lifestyle will keep you free. If for some reason you can't get involved in ministry, stop blaming some, anybody, just free. Get free. Well, I tried to get involved, I can't get involved, nobody likes me, Stop telling, your story. Stop telling yourself that story. And understand, only free people can serve in ministry. Only free people can make disciples of Jesus Christ. And until you're free, you can't serve. And until you're free, you can't reproduce. Our freedom is to be used to lovingly serve one another. Our freedom is to be used to serve. Galatians 5, 15, 13 says, for you have been called to live in freedom. You've been called to live in what? Freedom. 
You didn't call, you're not called to live in depression. You're not called to live in anxiety. You're not called to live in lust. You're not called to live in porn. You're not called to live in the past. You're not called to live in abuse. You're not called to live, come on, you're not called to live that life. You're called to live in freedom. And if that's your calling, you might as well go ahead and accept your identity and accept your call and start walking in the freedom that you were called to live in. My brothers and sisters, who is he talking to? Brothers and sisters, don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. What he says, you've been set free. Now don't go back into bondage again. So now you've been set free, you've been forgiven, and you're going to take that great opportunity and go back into the pig's pen? Use your freedom to serve one another in love. Use your freedom to what? Come on, we need some servants in children's ministry. We need some servants in this church. We need some servants in the altar. We need some servants to clean up this church. Come on, we need some workers that are ready to go hit the streets and transform lives. We need some servants that are ready to give and make sure that we finance the kingdom of heaven. I will use my full life to serve God. God's presence and freedom is promised to be perpetually with all disciple makers. Now, when we, when we have God's presence, we have liberty. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is what? Being a disciple and making disciples is God's will for your life. What's God's will for my life? I don't know what my calling is. Be a disciple and make disciples. And he goes, and if you do that, I'll be with you. Look at Matthew 28. 19 it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach this new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If you'll just go ahead and make disciples, my presence will be with you, in you, and you will see my power, and you will walk in freedom and help others get set free. And until you start making disciples, I'm telling you, and start serving, there's something holding you back. Tonight's the night to get free. Not free to be free, free to serve. Not free to go back to sin, free to start making disciples. Free to do what God called you to do. And the last verse, serving others and making disciples keeps us healthy and free. In John 4, 34, it says, then Jesus explained. Jesus explained, my nourishment, my health comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. He goes, I'm here for a purpose. You know how I stay free and strong and healthy spiritually? I stay in ministry. He was talking about a lady that he met at a well at this time. She had five husbands at this time. She was living with somebody. She was an outcast in her neighborhood. And while everybody was running from her, Jesus was running to her. He goes, you're talking about her and you're judging her? I came to save her. I'm going to have a private meeting with her. And the disciples went to go get something to eat. Jesus didn't eat all day. And then and they said, you want some food? He goes, no, nah, I already ate. He goes, what'd you eat? He goes, you don't understand. My food and my nourishment comes from doing my father's will. You know why I'm healthy, why I'm strong, and I got more energy than all of you? And you just all had Big Macs? I got more energy than all of you, and I'm healthier than all of you, and I'm freer than all of you because I'm involved, come on, in the ministry of God on earth, and I can nourish from, from doing and finishing what God called me to do. I am free to do. I am free to serve. I am free to make disciples. Keep on making disciples. Keep on serving. Don't stop, and I guarantee you this, you'll be free for the rest of your life. Come on, let's give God some praise. We just did it. Come on, give God some praise. We just did it. So I'll stand up. Hallelujah. How many want to be free? If, you, if there's like a free life I could live, 
and I could live in this, why wouldn't I want to live in it? You came to Jesus because you were tired of the chains that you were in. Why would you want to go back? You know, you know what the idea is? We need to start treasuring the word of God and treasuring the work of God in our lives. Gain ground and hold it. Now, you can live in a cycle of coming to church three months, leaving for three months, coming back for three months, and leaving for two months, and coming back for one month, and leaving by four months. You could do that for the rest of your life. Well, I've been in church. It, uh, how long have you been in church? Well, 20 years. Okay, we haven't been in church for 20 years, but you've been here for a long time then. <laughs> have you done, have you gone to membership? No, I haven't. Are you part of a, a a P12, no, 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 no. You done Holy Wars one? No, no. So you haven't been, you're serving a ministry? No, mm -mm. But I love my church. <laughs> I'm not, I understand. I'm, this is what I'm saying is that there's something holding you back. We've all been there, and I'm not, I'm not saying anybody, we're all, we're all in the same place. We're in the same battle. I'm just not going to be held back anymore. I'm going to serve. If I have to, like, sweep the floors after church, and there's a little section I'm going to sweep every week to make sure it's clean, I'm going to sweep it every week until they say, sweep more. Promotion. Hey. I got more territory. And while you're sweeping that, you're praying and you're getting filled with the spirit. And by the time you're done, you're casting out demons. You're leading someone to Jesus. Come on, then you got a crew helping you sweep because now I got some disciples. We're the discipleship sweeping crew. Be free. Be free to be happy. Be free to be involved. Be free to be connected. Be free to receive love, give love. Be free. Be free to be corrected. Be free to be, in a, be a disciple. Be free to be mentored. Be free to enjoy life. Be free to have a healthy marriage and relationship. Be free to raise godly children. Be free to have dreams instead of nightmares. Be free. I'm tired of being hindered. I don't want to be in a cycle, and I don't want you to be in a cycle of being free, going back chains, being free, going back to chains. And it feels like five years have gone by, but there's no progress. We're still trying to conquer the same exact property. We gain it, we lose it, we gain it, we lose it, we gain it, we lose it. And I, I, I'm proud of you to keep getting up. But I want to train you how to get up and stay up. It's okay. Get a fall, get up, get a fall, get up, get, get, get a fall, get, get, get up, get up, get up. But there has to be a time that you get older, you actually are able to stay up. That's called maturity. There has to be a time that that temptation to drink has no more power over you. Because you're so full of the word of God. How many want to be free? Let's buy her for a second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, move. Set your people free. Who the Son says free is free indeed. Father, it's not a shame to be in chains. It's a shame to keep them. It's not a shame to have a demon. It's a shame to keep it when we could be free. Set us free. Holy Spirit. There are those in this room even trying to conquer the depression, the hurt, the pain, and the abuse you've gone through. And you've not been able to do it. The pain gets worse. The misery gets worse. And you're wondering, when was this cycle break? And Jesus is a chain breaker. Today's your day. Surrender to the Lord. 
give your life to Jesus. The Bible says, who the Son says free is free indeed. You could be free. You could be whole. You could have eternal life. Jesus says, I've come to give you life in abundance. Church, if Jesus came to give us this rich and enjoyable life, we better learn how to live it. Get your freedom. Hold your freedom. Fight the good fight of faith. And at the end, we'll go to heaven and celebrate 24-7 forever. But you don't have to wait to get to heaven to start experiencing some freedom, some joy, some peace, some fruit right now. You're saying, that's me, pastor. I want to be free. I want you to leave your seat and come up if you want to be free. Maybe there's unforgiveness. You need to forgive somebody. Come on, you, you need to let it go. You're bitter. You need to let it go. You're depressed. You need to let it go. Come on, something's happening. And you're saying, tonight I need to let it go. I want to be free. Anybody else? As they're coming up, we're going to pray. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to release in a second, but let's pray. Come on, this is your day. Freedom is here. Come on, healing is here. Deliverance is here. New life is here. New beginnings are here. Come on, it's time to be free and stay free. still coming. Come on, they're still coming. You could be set free from pornography. You could be set free from perversion. You could get set free from nightmares. You could get set free from schizophrenia and healed. You could get set free from being bipolar. You could get set free and you could have a new life today because old things pass away and everything becomes new in Christ. Come on, today's your new day. Today's your new beginning. Come on, be free to follow Jesus. You followed the devil. You followed your sin. It hasn't worked. It's left you miserable. It's left you hopeless. It's left you in chains. Come on, come to Jesus. Come to me. All that are weary, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I'll give you new life. Today's your day. It's not too late. Today's your day. Hallelujah. All right. Church. Church. Let's not forget or take for granted what God does every time in these altars. We pray for them. We intercede for them. We are not going to be an in and out burger church. You come here, you get a feel good message, then you go home and we don't intercede and we don't pray and we don't, come on, we don't fight for our brothers and sisters. We're a church that we're in this together. And that means, come on, when someone's hurting, we're all hurting and we're all praying. I know things might be good for you, but up here, people need a breakthrough. They need a miracle today. And Jesus is here. Let this be a house of prayer. Let this be a house of intercession. Let this be a house of warfare. We fight. We love you. We love every one of you here. And we fight for you. Somehow, you ended up here tonight. This was your night. And this will be your testimony. I was there on that night when Pastor Marco talked about staying free. 
And that was the night I got set free. And that was the night that the cycle broke. Come on, the poverty broke. The hopelessness broke. The immorality broke. The cycle, come on, the destructive thing broke. And I'm free. Let's go. Let's fight. Let's pray. Everybody in the church, everybody up here, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe in your word. I believe in you, Jesus. I know that I've sinned. And sin comes with slavery. It comes with chains. What I give myself to, I become a slave to. I've given myself to wrong thoughts, wrong habits, wrong actions. I've been in sin. And I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me and set me free. I believe that you were punished, you suffered, you died, you were buried, then you rose from the dead to give me a new life. I don't earn it. It's a gift. I receive my gift of forgiveness, my gift of freedom, my gift of eternal life right now. Thank you, Jesus for setting me free and devil I command you now get out of my mind get out of my body get out of my family I command you in the name of Jesus go there it goes 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 freedom online freedom online right there in your house freedom online this is your day of freedom say this with me fill me Lord with your Holy Spirit today I commit to being a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life I am free in Jesus name let's give the Lord a big hand a big praise church we're gonna pray for everyone that's here make sure we go to the next step come on there's another level fight 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 this good fight of faith I guarantee you win you're more than a conqueror of Christ we love you church so much God bless you thanks for being such a great audience we're able to get the holy warriors to lesson six today thank you so much 